Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number one in the Access Control Vulnerabilities module titled Unprotected Admin Functionality. All right, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course, and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. I'm going to go down, select the learning path, go down, select access control. and then go down to the first lab titled Unprotected Admin Functionality. All right, let's get started. This lab has an unprotected admin panel. What that means is it likely does not have access control implemented on it. So the developers forgot to put access control rules on it. And then it says solve the lab by deleting the user car rules. So our target goal over here is to find the admin panel and delete the user car rules. All right, let's access the lab. And while that loads, let's open up Burp. So this is the browser that comes built in with Burp, and that's why I don't have to set my Foxy Proxy extension on it. All right, so if we click on Home right over here, you could see it just redirects me to the main page. And then if I click on My Account, it says it failed to connect. That's probably because the internet connection went down, so let's reload it over here. And you could see over here, it gives me the login page. So let's try and see if we could figure out what the admin panel is. So I'm going to try with admin first and it says it's not found. So let's try admin panel maybe. Still not found. Let's try administrator. Also not found. Let's try administrator panel. And here we go. So we gained access to the administrator panel and clearly there is missing access control rules on the administrator panel. Now in a real world engagement, what you would do is you would try and brute force any directories that are not directly visible in the application. But because this is an exercise, I just tried a few of the most common ones and I managed to figure out that it's administrator panel. All right, the next step is to delete the user Carlos. So we're gonna click on delete and here we go it says congratulations you solved the lab all right so we successfully completed the exercise by first guessing what the administrator panel endpoint is and then deleting the user carlos and we were able to do that because there's no access control rules that were implemented on the admin functionality the next thing we're going to do is script the exploit and if you're new to this channel you don't know why we're scripting it it's essentially because i believe as a pen tester you should learn how to code or at least script your exploits and so we always script all of our exploits in all the exercises that we do so we usually start off with importing the requests library that's what's going to allow us to perform web requests we're also going to import the sys library and the url lib3 library we're going to disable warnings for the url lib library so url lib3 dot exceptions dot insecure request warning and then we're going to set our proxy setting so 
what that does is it sets the setting of burp so that any requests that is made by my script goes through burp first and then gets sent to the application and any response from the application goes through burp first and then gets sent to my script. And the reason I do that is because if my exploit doesn't work, what I want to do is I want to try and debug why it's not working and viewing the exact request that is being made by the script really helps with doing that. So localhost 127.0.0.1 and port 8080. All right, then we're going to say if name is equal to main, then call the main method. And then we're going to implement the main method. Okay, so we're going to say if the length of the arguments, so the command line arguments, is not equal to 2, then I'm going to print a few items to inform the user how to run the script, because clearly the user doesn't know how to run the script. So we're going to say the usage instructions. So the name of the script and the URL. And I'm going to print again the usage instructions, but in this case, we're going to print an example of how to run the instruction. So example, again, name of the script, and then let's say the URL is www.example.com. And again, takes in the name of the script. All right, that looks good. And then we're just going to end the program because it was run incorrectly. Okay, now assuming the user ran it correctly and put in two arguments, the first thing we're going to do is create a URL variable and then set the uh, second argument to that URL variable. So argv1. And then we're going to print... finding admin panel because first we need to find it and then we're going to try and delete the carlos user and to do that we're going to implement that functionality in a function called delete user and that takes in the url okay so let's start implementing that function so it takes in a url and we're going to say admin panel URL is equal to URL plus administrator panel. Okay, so in this scenario over here for the script, just for simplicity purposes, we're just going to try one. But if this one doesn't work, what you would do is try a second one and so on. So you would put them all in another file and you would read from that file. Okay, the next thing is we're going to perform the request. So request.get and it's a get request. So if we go back to our proxy right over here and we look at HTTP history, if we try and search on the latest request, you could see when we requested the administrator panel over here, it's a get method. And that's why we're performing a get request in our script. And that's another reason, by the way, why I think scripting the exploit is really useful, because you do properly understand how it works instead of just relying on tools to perform that work for you. So we're performing a get method over here, and it takes in the uh, URL of the administrator panel, which is this one right over here. So that would be admin panel URL. We're going to set verify is equal to false. I don't want to verify TLS certificates. And then we're going to set proxies to be equal to proxies. And what that does is it ensures that this request over here goes through this proxy over here, which is our burp proxy. And again, that's for debugging purposes. All right, and then we're going to say if the status code is equal to equal to 200 then we're gonna print 
found the administrator panel. Then we're also going to print deleting Carlos user. Because if we found the administrator panel, then we should be able to delete the Carlos user. Now, the reason, again, we said it's a 200 OK response, because if we go back to our proxy right over here, when we found the administrator panel, and it was really the administrator panel, you could see that the response was a 200 OK response. However, when we were trying a get request with the wrong endpoint, it was a 404 response, so not found. And that's why uh, we know that this wasn't the correct endpoint for an administrator panel. However, if it is the correct endpoint, it gives us a 200 OK response. And that's why we're adding that check in our script. OK, now we need to perform another request to delete the user. So we're going to create a new endpoint. So delete Carlos URL. And that would be the admin panel URL plus the endpoint to delete the user Carlos. Now, again, to get that, we need to go through our proxy and see which endpoint deleted the Carlos user. And you could see right over here, this is the endpoint that deletes the Carlos user. So we're just going to copy that. And notice again, it's a get request. And that's why we're going to be using a get method in a bit. So let's put the endpoint right over here. Now, slash administrator panel is already in our admin panel URL, so we don't need to add it right over here. Okay, next we make the request. So request.get, again, it's a get method because that's what we saw in the proxy. It takes in the URL delete Carlos user. We're going to set verify to be equal to false because I don't want to verify TLS certificates. And then I'm going to set proxies to be equal to proxies so that it sends this request to burp. Now, when I run the script, the request will first be sent to burp and then it'll be sent to the application. And again, that's just in case I need it for debugging purposes. And then we're going to perform the same check, which is if R dot status code is equal to equal to 200. That means the Carlos user was successfully deleted. So we're going to print Carlos user deleted. Otherwise, over here, so this is the else statement for this one right over here. We're going to print could not delete user. And that would be a negative. And then for this else statement over here, which is for this if statement right over here, we're going to say, if you don't get a 200 OK response, then you're going to print administrator panel not found. And then we're going to print another statement saying that we're exiting the script. Okay, this looks good. So essentially, just a recap of what we did is we've got a script that takes in two parameters, the name of the script and the URL. Once it takes in the URL, it sets it to this variable over here, which gets passed to the function delete user. Now in delete user, it performs two items. So the first one is it tries to find the administrator panel. If it finds it, so if it's a 200 OK response, then it attempts to delete the Carlos user. If it doesn't find it, it'll print this statement right over here, which is that the administrator panel was not found and that it's exiting the script. Now, when it tries to delete the Carlos user, what happens is that it attempts to delete it. Again, if it's a 200 OK response, it'll tell you that the user was successfully deleted. If it's not a 200 OK response, it'll tell you that it could not delete the user. And that's essentially all the script does. All right, let's save it and try to run it. So terminal, new terminal, and we're going to go with Python 3, access control lab 01.py. And we need the URL of the application. Let's see if this one's still valid. And it timed out. So let's start a new instance of the lab. 
And it's good that it's a new instance because we already deleted the Carlos user. And I'm going to need a fresh instance in order for this script to work and properly delete the user as well. So let's copy that and put it in here. And let's remove the last slash because that'll interfere with this slash over here and the slash over here. So hit enter. And if we go back to our proxy right over here, so you could see over here, it says finding admin panel and then it found it and then it tried to delete the Carlos user and it was able to successfully delete it. So if we go to our requests, we should be able to see all of them. So you could see over here, this is the first request that we performed trying to find the administrator panel. We got a 200 OK response and then we tried to delete the user right over here. We got a 302 found and that directed us to a 200 OK response. So we've successfully completed the exercise. If we reload this again, it should say that we've solved the lab. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by first performing the exploit manually and then scripting it. In the next couple of labs, we'll look at other more complex access control vulnerabilities. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.